probably one of the most scariest times for me was when I used to get these phone calls from somebody who said that they watched me training. I'm not somebody who would go for a run late at night. You just don't know who's around the corner. What happened to you during your career? I think probably one of the most scariest times for me was when um, I think I was probably about 23, 24 years old, training at New River um, Stadium. And um, I didn't know at the time, but um, when I was working, I used to get these phone calls from somebody who said that they watched me um, training. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So what, you was at the track? And he was like, yeah. So I thought, okay. I said, well, let yourself be known the next time. We're training. I looked up, I saw a figure in the corner and I wasn't quite sure whether it was him or not. The following day, I got another phone call saying to me, oh, you know, I still think that you should work on your arms. And I was like, hold on a second, like, who are you? When I went to training, I think two days later, I was showing the guys at my training group um, that this guy, I think, has been, you know, following me around. And they went to go and talk to him and he walked away. Didn't see anything of him for maybe a, probably about four or five weeks, I think. And then um, someone said to me that there's somebody downstairs in the reception wanting to see me. And I was like, who's that? And they said, I don't know. And they described the person. And I thought, oh my God, it's him. He's actually come to my office. And then I just said, no, I'm going to go down and I'm going to confront him and I'm going to let him know that this is unacceptable. Like you cannot come to my office. You cannot follow me down. You can't do this to me and I'm not going to be intimidated. I didn't hear or see anything of him for a long while after that. I think probably about two or three months, I was downstairs next door to a library and he turned up and I looked at him, stared him in the face. And that was the last time I saw him. If I look back at now and, you know, and having two daughters, of, of my age, I would have told him not to have done what I did, like probably have reported it. But you know, at the time, you know, feeling pretty strong on myself, I've got five brothers and you know, they're always saying to me, you know, you've got to confront people, don't let them make you feel like you're intimidated. And I think that's why I did what I did. For me, I think it dampens you a little bit because the thing is that it doesn't matter how much physically or mentally strong you feel, that for some unknown reason that men feel that they can actually intimidate you because you are a woman. What did it do to you when you were at the track? Because if it started there, I guess you kind of associated it with your athletics. I never went anywhere on my own. I was too scared. To me, to be fair, if I see any woman walking the streets at half past 10 or whatever, I just think, why are you doing this? because opportunity. I didn't do anything on my own because I didn't know whether this person was going to turn up, whether he's going to be angry with me because I was angry with him. So, you know, it did put a little bit of a dampen on, on my own sort of like security for myself. Did you ever think about retiring because of this? I don't think I thought about retiring, but I did think about where do I go with this? Like, you know, am I going to be scared all the time or am I going to just carry on and just train and just get on and you know, do the things that I normally do that come natural. Um, it did make me a little bit more cautious, getting off the train, getting on the bus, looking around my surroundings. If the guy who was stalking you and turned up to the track in your work saw this interview, what would you want to say to him? What message would you give him? Don't play with me again. Like, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair. What you did was not fair because I never asked for it. You didn't know me, I didn't know you. I was just doing my thing, whereas you should have been doing your thing as well. But the fact that you took it to the next level because you wanted to invade my space, like, don't do it. I tried to get women and girls to understand about, about the inner strength that you need for yourself to stand tall in all aspects, work, training, boyfriends, hunger, friends, whatever it may be that you've got to be, you've got to be you. You've got to be the, the best that you can be of yourself but never allow anyone to step in there. I'm not going to just allow myself to be bullied by anyone, even at the age that I am now, 59 soon. You know, I still get men, people that come in and they'll think that because I don't say much, or well, I'm just because I'm a woman, I'm not going to really do anything. But I will stand my ground, 100%. I will tell you the reason why I was so strong, but then I, I've really not really made it public, public. But when I was younger, I was sexually assaulted by friendly fam or whatever. And um, the darkest time of my entire life, darkest time of my entire life. And, uh, and at that age, I tried to commit suicide. If I had succeeded, I would have been uh, a troubled child who like, you know, couldn't control herself and did whatever, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I remember when I uh, made the Olympic games in 88 and I was crying my eyes out and um, I was just, I was just taken back by the whole scenario like I, that like I couldn't have been here if I'd succeeded because you know a, a, a man uh, assaulted me and my whole family went against me 
because it was somebody who was in the family. I think this is the reason why I'm so strong about myself and about my girls and everything, is that if somebody actually succeeded, I wouldn't have been here today. And I don't think I could ever get to a dark area like that again because I saved myself. My girls sometimes think I'm, I'm, I'm too sort of like claustrophobic with them because I'm always warning them about things. I'm warning them about friends and families. And when the girls were younger, I wouldn't even allow them to stay at people's houses because I had to go and investigate and find out who they were and if they had brothers and sisters, all that sort of stuff. Because I was so afraid of like trying to protect their area. But when I look back, and I look at all the intimidation that I've had and how I stand up for myself, it all stems from what happened to me as a girl that never to let that happen to me again. Now, I've never told anyone that's so that No, but it's life though, isn't it? Like, I yeah. haven't, I've never really spoken about it as such. And people would say, oh my God, Jennifer, you're so amazing. Like, look at you. But I'm like, yeah, okay, it's family. There's a big trail there. But yeah, but, uh, but I'm, not, I'm not a victim. I'm not somebody who feels like the world's got to be sorry for me. And I don't look back and let that justify who I am today. Or I don't say, oh my God, my life could have been so different and whatever. I, I believe all my, the things that I've gone through in my life have got me to where I am now and I love who I am now. But I'll always be strong about who I am yeah. and where I'm going. And I'll always be definite, but I would never allow somebody to take me out because I could have taken myself out when I was younger and I didn't. So I have a right to be here. What would your advice be to people who feel unsafe exercising be smart look at the areas that you're training where you're training the people that are around you as much as we want to be independent sometimes you just you you can't take risks don't go jogging late at night don't go into really dark areas um, just try to be as sensible as you can and it's not a question of feeling like you've been handcuffed like you can do it it's just being sensible because we can't let them um, legislate for other people and what they're saying and what they're doing do you think the world of sport caters to women's needs and their kind of safety and security. I do believe that we're getting there, but I don't think it's so much educating the women, we have to educate, you know, the boys. Let the boys understand how to protect us as well and, you know, situations. And also to, for, you know, for guys to understand like how intimidating this really is. And it could be, you know, your mother or your sister. It could be anybody at the end of the day, but we have to all understand the fear factor of how women feel when they're in a very unsecure um, area.